Okay, let's take a look at the Houdini workspace. So when you first open up Houdini, uh, well, let's put something into the scene first. Let's press the C key to bring up a radial menu. Go down to geometry and uh, let's do a torus. Press enter to place it at the origin. So now we've got our three main panes um, that we're working with. The scene view, the parameter pane, and the network pane. And you're going to be using some combination of these three a lot in Houdini. So basically if I move an object, you'll see parameters change over there, and the object is represented by a node down there. We can rotate scale, control Z to undo that. Now if we go up to the shelf, uh, we can pick another tool uh, if we want to, and we'll do that a little bit later. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to just change our display to a smooth wire shaded so you can get a sense of the topology of that piece of geometry. And then we're going to go to a layout, a viewport layout using the V key. Let's do a four view system. So you can split this up and then these little bars you can move to reposition them uh, to put a little more focus on the perspective view if you wanted. And you can use the space bar um, left, middle, and right mouse button to do your, your view tools. Spacebar B will bring this up, and then we've got our object in place, so we're sort of back where we, we started. So we want to go in and go N and go down, and this takes us down to what's called the geometry level. So the upper level had our transformation information. This now has our the shape information. So you can go up to the object level or down to the geometry level. And this is using a tree view here which we were able to uh, expand out. Now up at the top are the operation controls. So for instance if I want to make some changes here, um, those parameters are the same parameters that are down at the geometry level. Um, the advantage is that they'll still be there uh, even if I go up to the object level. The very last node in a chain will present information up at the top if you have the um, handle tool active. So those, as you can see, those parameters are still up there. Now we're going to go here and now we're going to go tab. Another way to get tools is with the tab keys. And start typing L-I-N and put a line in. We're going to make the length of that line 5 and the number of points 6. And we can display that um, just using the sidebar here, this is the display bar, and we can show those points, and you can see those points going up there. And if we wanted more of them, we could type 8 per se, uh, but we're going to go 6. So now we have two objects, a line and a torus, and um, we want to use the line to make copies of the torus. So what we're going to do is lift the line up a little bit, and with it selected, um, let's not do that. So with the sorry, with the torus selected, we're going to go to the modify copy to points, and there we are using the shelf enter. So that created one torus for every point on that curve. Now we can go to primitive selection just so we don't see the points right now. And what we want to do is. Um, just change this a little bit. So let's go into here and we're going to tab and we're going to put a node here in the network and we're going to put attribute randomize. And this is going to allow us to, well by default it does color, so we can explore different colors on our object. So each point gets a color and then that gets transferred to the object that's on it. And you can play with the global seed to get the combination that you're looking for. We can then alt drag um, this node, wire it back in there. But this time we're going to call it p-scale. So this is scaling all the points and in turn scaling the the toruses. So now we can go in and just go 0.5 to 1.5. So here we are in the parameter pane, you know, putting the information in that's going to give us a different result in the uh, 3D view. And the network is controlling the flow of information as we go down uh, the chain towards the copy to points. Now we're going to put in something called point jitter and we're going to put zero for Y because we just want to jitter around in the um, in two directions. And this just gives us a little offset for this geometry. We can play with the seed as well if we want to try some, some different things. 
And then once we get what we're looking for, um, let's go into here and we're going to go tab RBD bullet solver. We're going to set the display flag on that. And now we can go in and set a ground plane. Add some more bounce in. And press play. Now they sort of all landed on top of each other. So this is where the procedural nature of Houdini comes in because we can go back up to, for instance, the point jitter and play with that. And there we go. So now we've got a, a slightly better result for that. Okay, now that we have that, uh, let's go in and uh, just look at that smooth shaded. Now what we want to do is we want to render those as subdivisions. So if we select those objects, we have an option for display as subdivision. Actually, we're going to we're going to be rendering with the viewport, so that's that's what we need. And once we've got that, we can set the display flag back back to smooth shaded. And now what we want to do is we want to let's um, go back to the shelf, get the grid, and press Enter to place that at the origin. And change the size. Let's go 100, 100. Now, once we have that, we can tumble around a little bit. Let's just get a little bit closer in there. And, oh, let's zoom out and add a point light. Set the intensity a little bit higher. So you see, we use a shelf tool. We get something in 3D view. We change the parameter, and there is a node in the network view to represent that. So Though again, you see those three panes sort of working together. So now we tumble around and we get that sort of view. Now, if we press the D key, uh, we're going to set up, get some display of that. Now, first, let's just look at the different options here on the sidebar here. But if we want more, more detail, we can press the D key. And in here, uh, we can go to lights and we can, for instance, uh, increase the light map size. And we could turn on uh, ambient occlusion there if we wanted to, uh, but we don't need that here. Once you got that, uh, we're ready to go. So we can just go back and press play. And there we go, our objects are falling, hitting the ground. And if we zoom up and sort of get a nice view like this, there we go. So I hope this has been a good introduction, giving you a little sense of what the main parts of Houdini are, the scene view, the parameter pane, the network pane things like the shelf and the operation controls, you'll be using them a lot as you work with Houdini.